I've got um, on each of these insulated terminals I've got uh, two shoulder washers on both sides. I think it just guarantees that uh, there isn't going to be any electrical contact there. Okay. I gotta decide how I'm gonna bend these. Where they're gonna position them. I'm gonna try to relieve them and angle them and then put in a service loop so these can actually be removed and put back in if they get loose. Uh, that way they'll be they won't be bound by their connecting wires last ones I ended up having to swap them out because I had those stainless steel ones in there and they don't work this whole area was just getting smoking hot so I found that they're, they're without any service loops it was very difficult so I'm going to put a couple service loops in here going to make it so you can just slide these in and out no problem this one shouldn't be a problem. I'm going to tighten it down metal to metal. It shouldn't slip. So the next thing I'm going to cover is um, tightening these up. Making sure they're uh, good and snug. Okay, let's talk about tightening these up. Big screwdriver. You want these as tight as possible. This is probably where steel is a little bit better because there's always a chance I can damage the screw head. But brass conducts electricity better. That ain't going nowhere. Okay, do that for all three of them. So on the ground, I've got a screw head, lug, steel lock washer, brass nut. Brass washer, case, brass washer, brass nut. Okay, so what I'm going to do is run C5 negative to here, and then I'm going to run. R12, which is the uh, sense resistor, a 5 inch piece of wire, 14 gauge. It's going to come from this side of the case over here. I'm going to run it around. It's going to come up. It's going to dive out of the way of the screw head right here. It's going to come this way, this way down through here. It's going to go through. the inside of the lug and then down to the negative terminal and there will be a little loop down there so there's plenty of solder so that'll be one piece all the way to ground and then all the way back over to the first MOSFET and then that piece will still be one piece it will continue all the way across to all the FETs so we minimize the number of junctions All right, so I know where that spade's going to go when you saw that picture. Now we're going to lock that in.
You don't want these coming loose, especially this one from the case. You want to keep the case grounded just to keep any noise down. Make sure that the uh, shoulder washers actually lock into the grooves. Okay, so thinking of just a small service loop, dive down, catch that first FET right there, run it across, R12, comes up, does a little zigzag, comes across, comes back the other way, makes the connections to the FETs. From the middle FET area, uh, D1 comes up, goes to the positive terminal. Positive power comes from the positive terminal over to the board. Which should be right over here. So the negative will come across smaller wire, go to the negative terminal. Once you get your wiring worked out, tighten up these cell negative and your positive input. But you do want to have a little bit of freedom of movement. Don't lock it down yet. It's a never winning battle. Okay. So, I'm at a stop spot because I need a drill bit that will allow me to pass a screw through this hole and then into the threads that I'm going to put into, into my heat sink. So, I'm going to put two each, each FET on the back side will sit like this. Like that. The wires will all come out this way. And then on the back side of this, there will be a heat sink. And I'll drill through that case, and the screw will pass right through it. And then I'll mark the holes and drill right into the into the heat sink and thread that heat sink. So that'll become the nut for these screws.